travelers, and welcome back to another episode of On The Go. I'm Miss Stephanie, and if you haven't joined us, each week we use an awesome app called GeoQ to take a quest around the globe. It's so cool. All we do is tell the app we're ready to go, then we jump on a plane together and take a trip to a completely new location. The best part is, we never know where we're going until we get there. Last week, we spent our time in New Zealand learning all about how God is our shepherd. We found out he's always leading us, protecting us, and taking care of everything we ever need. I sure do love traveling, don't you? God has created so many unique and beautiful places for us to see, and we get to go to one of those places today. But first, with all my traveling, I've learned some things to make traveling a little easier. Are you ready for today's travel hack? Today's actually three in one, because today we are going through some of my biggest travel mistakes, and I'm gonna tell you what I've learned from them. Okay, are you ready? The first one was I forgot to look at the budget and ran out of money halfway through the trip. Zoinks, has this ever happened to you? Maybe your mom sent you to camp with 20 bucks and you spent all that money on the first day and you missed out on buying a snow cone on the last day. Well, I've been there and the moral of the story is always remember the budget and don't blow all of your money in the first day. You never know what you're going to run into that you'll need or want money for. Okay, my next travel mistake is kind of bad. I forgot to check the time zones and arrived a day before the hotel was booked. Let me tell you, sleeping in the car for a whole night is very uncomfortable. Which leads me to the second travel hack. Always check the time zones for where you're going. This is also helpful for when you are trying to make it to the museums before they close. Lastly, the travel mistake doesn't seem like a mistake. It's, I overpacked so much that the suitcase was too heavy for the airplane. Had to remove items from the suitcase and leave them in the airport. So I'd rather pack everything when I go somewhere, wouldn't you? I just want to make sure I have everything I need. I mean, who doesn't pack Parmesan cheese just in case you run into a delicious pizza place on your travels? It is essential. Well, suitcases can only weigh so much. And once I had to take out a whole lot of items before I could get on the plane, I never saw those items again. So it's okay to overprepare, but just make sure you're making the weight limits of those airlines. I hope my hacks help some of you avoid some major travel mistakes. Well, it's almost time for us to jump on that plane, so let's turn up those travel tunes.
That song always gets me in the traveling spirit. I don't know where we're headed, but I'm sure it's going to be our best trip yet. And remember, where we're going, we might need our sand alls. Okay, let's go. That is a lot of sand. I've never been anywhere like this before. Our clue last week wasn't kidding. This place would be all sand without that one river. But am I missing something? Because I don't see that river. I wonder where we are. Let's check our other clues, because surely this country has more to offer than, well, dirt. Hmm. Our second clue says that the wrappings of just one mummy found here could stretch for a mile. Hmm, that is interesting, but mummification started in one place and became a global practice, so we could really be anywhere. Okay, our last clue is much more helpful. It says the oldest and largest pyramid in existence is located in this country. Now I know what that is. It's the Pyramid of Giza. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. Do you know where we are yet? If you're thinking Egypt, you are right. Let's log it in our GeoCube. Marabon, my mummies. That's how the Egyptians say hello in their native language, Arabic. Well, I may have added the mummies part, but you get the point. I'm Wand Around, and at your request, I'm here to confirm you are in fact on the continent of Africa in the country of Egypt. Welcome to the land of the Desert Pyramids, GeoQuesters. You may be wondering why you've wandered all the way over to the land of sand and Nile crocodiles. Well, why don't we ask our mummy friends? Hmm, I guess they're keeping things under wraps. In the meantime, you could get to work on building a pyramid. After all, it took 20,000 workers 23 years to build one. So for us, just doing the math, carry the one times five, divide that by 26 for some reason, and um, well, we'll leave that to the professionals. Phew, woo! You may notice it gets a little hot out here in the desert, and if you're holding out hope for some rainfall, keep on dreaming. Egypt only gets about one inch of rain per year. Yeah, you heard that right. 365 days and only one inch? That's like half a pinky's worth of rain. Temperatures can be a scorcher, getting up to 114 degrees in the hottest part of the summer. So even if that rainfall did come, I'm guessing it would just dry right up. Egypt isn't a completely dry land though. There is a river that runs through it called the Nile. And while that houses crocodiles, Egypt is also home to a variety of other animals like jackals, gazelles, and cobras. Ugh, no thank you. How about something a little cuter? Did you know that here in Egypt, cats are considered to be a sacred animal? Take that, cobras! Mm. Enough meowing around. I bet you're ready to find out what souvenir you're looking for today. It's a good one, too. I've loaded the coordinates into GeoCube. You'll find your souvenir at 30 degrees, to 39 degrees north interstate highway. Well, if that's not enough, you know I've got you covered. Wander around doesn't make you wander around. Here's a few hints to get you going. Don't judge it by the outside or you'll miss half of the prize. It's the color of the sands and back in the beginning, you'll find it deep within the tombs. Best of luck to you. Come back once you found the souvenir. Dude, I am super pumped to find this souvenir. Our clues were, if you were judged by its outside, we'll miss half of the prize. Hmm, that must mean that there's more than one part to it. So it could be a book maybe, or a box of something. But the second clue is maybe a little more helpful. It said it was the color of sands. 
And these sands are definitely like a golden brown color. So maybe we're looking for something gold or brown. The final clue from Juan said that in the beginning, we would have found it deep in the tomb. Pyramids were tombs. So I guess we're looking for something we'd find inside a pyramid. Do you guys see anything that might look like it goes in a pyramid? Oh, whoa, well this might be it. Huh. But I think we need to unbox it to see what's actually inside because they said that, you know, there was more than one part to it. Um, do you know what this is? Yikes, it's a mummy. I really hope this isn't something actually dead wrapped up. That's kind of creepy. Let's tell Juan that we found it. Whew, I was starting to think you got swept away in the sands of time. Maybe stuck in a sand trap or worse, eaten up by some quicksand. Whoa! Whew. But no, you didn't get wrapped up in anything like that. Get it? Wrapped? Like the mummy you found? <laughs> Anyways, the whole mummy thing is super interesting. When someone died, ancient Egyptians would cover the body in a powder, wrap it up in layers of linen, and then place the body down into a coffin. Those Egyptians were trying to care for those who died. But do you know who cares for us the most? And can even heal us when we aren't feeling too hot? God! That's right, God is the ultimate healer and still heals people today. In the Bible, there was a king named Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was a pretty young guy when he first took over and ended up being one of the greatest kings of all time. Yeah, I said it, he was a goat, like the king goat. Old Hezi remained faithful to God, and because of this, he was successful in everything he did. When King Hezekiah was around 39 years old, he became very sick. And we're not talking like the case of the sniffles, no way. He was so sick that God sent him a message through a prophet named Isaiah. The message told Hezekiah to go ahead and get things in order, that he wasn't going to get better and soon he would die. So you can imagine, this was pretty tough news to hear. The king wasn't ready to wrap things up quite yet. So he prayed to God and asked him to remember how faithful he had always been and how he always served God with his whole heart. Right after Hezekiah finished praying, God gave Isaiah another message for the king. This next message was quite the game changer. The message told Hezekiah that God had heard his prayers and, um, drum roll please, decided to heal him. That's right. God told Hezekiah that in three days, the king would go to the temple and then God would add 15 more years to his life. King Hezekiah was a little bit of a skeptic though and was like, prove it. He asked Isaiah for a sign, you know, so that God would prove he'd actually do it. And without missing a beat, Isaiah offered the king two options. Do you want the sun shadow to move forward 10 steps or back 10 steps? Hezekiah knew it was pretty easy for the shadow to move forward 10 steps, so he picked the other option. Well, challenge accepted. God made the shadow go back 10 steps and the king knew he would be healed. Hezekiah decided to go to the temple after three days and ended up living for 15 more years. 15! That's because God kept his promise and healed Hezekiah. God has many names, and one of those names is healer, because, well, God's a healer. You see, God really cares about us. He really wants us to be healthy physically, like with our bodies, emotionally, with our feelings, mentally, with our thoughts, and spiritually, in our relationship with him. That mummy you found is a great reminder that God can heal any sickness we have. He may not always heal in the way that we would choose, but we can be sure that God is our healer. The best of the quest isn't over yet. We've got lots of ground to cover, and I can't wait to see you next time. 
Who knew there was that much stuff to learn from mummies? I'm going to take this guy home and put him right next to my bed. That way, every time I look at him, I'll remember how God is my healer. Well, wait a second. There is no way I'm putting this dead thing by my bed. But now, every time I think of mummies, I will remember that God can heal all kinds of hurts. He can heal us when our bodies hurt, but he can also heal our hearts. God knows every single thing we need and when we need him to heal us. Nothing is too big or too small for him to do. Let's say this together. God is my healer. God is my healer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us more about who you are. We are so thankful that you are our healer. Thank you for loving us, caring for us, and healing our every hurt. Help us to remember that you can do anything. And because of that, we can ask you for what we need, big or small. We love you. Amen. Yes, I know that God is my healer. Okay, well next week we're off to somewhere new. Let's see what hint GOQ has for us. Okay, it says, in this country, you'll find a clock that weighs 13.7 tons and stands 316 feet tall? A clock that big? Hey, at least it may help us with the whole time zone thing, right? Well, let's get our travel tunes cranked back up as we get ready to head back home. Today was as awesome as always. We learned all about God being our healer and all about mummies. That was crazy, cool, and kind of creepy. But I hope you had as much fun as I did. Let's jump back on the plane and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.